Hi everyone, welcome to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch channel. My name is Marie and today I am going to talk to you all about pin stitch. This little project is from one of the Caterpillar Cross Stitch uh, subscription boxes and I have used the pin stitch for the entire project to start the thread and I am going to show you exactly how to do this. I am going to explain to you the anatomy of a pin stitch to make sure it doesn't unravel, that it holds well in place and that it's uh, practically invisible from the back. So without much further ado, let's get to it. There are a few variations of a pin stitch, but I'll get to them a little bit later on in the video. To start with, I am just going to show you a very basic pin stitch, and then I'm going to talk you through what makes a successful pin stitch. So to start with, I am going to pierce the middle part of a stitch. If you were stitching this on even weave or linen, this would be an, a hole in the fabric. On Ada, it is a middle of um, the fabric square. And then, so I went down through the middle, leaving the tail hanging. I am going up uh, in sort of either top or bottom, it really doesn't matter. And I am going to create the bottom leg of my stitch. So I'm going down, and this is incredibly important, I'm gonna to explain to you why a little bit later, you have to pierce this middle part. You have to, when you go down, you have to pierce your thread. Um, you have, that, that is uh, one of the things that anchors a pin stitch. Needle cannot go through the fabric going next to your thread it must truly pierce it so i'm going to make sure that i do the same when going down again through the middle and this time i'm going to try to pierce this half leg that i've got here already right i went at a bit of an angle to make sure that my needle catches a little bit of that thread and now i'm going to try and tug and it is so secure. So my job here is done. I'm going to snip it off. There is going to be always a little bit of a tail left, but don't worry about it because when I go to finish the top leg of my stitch, it has practically disappeared. If you are very, very, very perfectionist, you are going to see this but in the big, bigger scheme of things you are definitely not going to see that <laughs> so this was an absolute basic pin stitch so let's talk through what makes pin stitch a successful one so there are two things that make pin stitch successful first thing is creating that angle that bends um, the thread around the fabric that makes it highly unlikely that um, the thread is going to somehow unravel. The, the sort of bending, the angle, is what makes it move a lot less. So if I'm just going to sort of leave it freely and do just a couple of uh, bottom legs, I'm going to show you well, in theory, it's going to be difficult. The more bends there are, the more times your thread is going to hug the fabric, the more difficult it is going to be to just unravel it. See, I am really, really tugging. I'm tugging to the point of destroying my fabric, actually, and it just doesn't move. So that's an important part of the cross stitch, why, um, sorry, why pin stitch is anchoring your thread so well. It is the fact that it is hugging the, the fabric and it is sort of, you know, therefore anchored. The second part 
that is a very vital part in my opinion that makes pin stitch very successful is to remember that each thread is you know further down consisting of i think it's two um sort of strands of intertwined uh cotton that you know makes up what we call one strand one thread and if you pierce this thread the intertwining will make sure that you know you can't it doesn't unravel the intertwining sort of stays intact well unless you tug really really hard uh, which again doesn't happen just on its own in a project um, but it is the act of piercing that thread that is going to help your uh, thread stay put so when we sort of put it in practice I am going to show you what would happen if I didn't pierce the thread. So I am going to rely only on um, the hugging of the fabric alone. So I am going to make sure that I go through the middle very cleanly. There is absolutely nothing that would pierce the thread and again I'll try and go very very clean I don't know if I succeeded but let me just test it and now you can see it's moving because I didn't do the two-step anchoring I didn't make sure that the thread was pierced now let me cut it off because I have um, destroyed the ends a little bit the in the intertwining was destroyed a little bit and now let's look what would happen if i made sure i pierced the thread on every point of entry okay every time it crosses so i am going to make sure that the thread is pierced right now i'm definitely going through and I am going to do this again and I am going to go through and I am trying really really hard right now I am at the point where I'm worried that I'm going to um, break my fabric it is absolutely not moving when somebody has got the issue that their uh, pin stitches are unraveling they're unstable very very likely they are not piercing the uh, threads at every point of um, you know meeting I hope that all makes sense so in other words two things make sure that there is a good tension that gives um, the fabric a good hugging effect not to a point of distorting fabric, I'm not saying that, but not too loose. And then make sure that the thread is piercing the other threads at every point where it meets. And there it is. Honestly, there is nothing more to a pin stitch other than this. I, I can't... Um, uh, I can't overstate the usefulness of pin stitch once you've mastered it it's really 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 easy uh, to use every day during your stitching so now that we've covered the theory let's talk about a couple of different ways to actually make pin stitch for now I'm going to be working on Ada with two strands, but I also have a 40 count linen and one strand prepared for you so that I can show you how the pin stitch looks, well, the same, but still on a different piece of fabric with a different count of, um, uh, with a different count of threads in your needle. So we've already covered the 
spin stitch where you go in the middle sorry i'm not gonna make the big one where you go in the middle sorry cat hair um in the middle of a stitch you leave a little bit of the tail hanging then you go back in the middle making sure you've pierced your thread go back up and go back down the middle making sure you're you've pierced the thread and i'm sorry if i start annoying you with that but i cannot just overstay the importance of this now let's snip this really close I don't think you can even see it much. It really is um, just a tiny little piece of snipped off thread. Okay, so that was one point. Let me finish the thread. I am really not worrying about finishing threads right now. I'm focusing on starting the pin stitch, so I hope you'll forgive me. Then we can also leave the tail in, let's say, where your top stitch would start or end. And I am going to go up in the middle. So I'm not going up in uh, the corners. I'm going up in the middle, going down here. up where you know the half second half of the leg of your bottom stitch would be and then going making sure you pierce this and going through the bottom the middle sorry and that's it and then you're already straight away going to be creating your top stitch so i'm just going to clip this off and now when i go to finish my top stitch i am effectively bringing that you know little residual tail of my clipped uh thread down through the fabric so there is absolutely no um residual thread in theory uh, if i've done a cut a clean cut now so this stitch is better if you are really bothered about these little um tails being visible after you've cut off um your little you know tail but the downside of this is that if you've noticed there is one less thread being pierced so whereas over here we had we went through here we pierced the thread when going in the middle we're going down in the middle then we went up here and then we pierced the thread again when we went down in the middle so we've pierced the thread twice which makes it a very 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 secure pin stitch over here there is only one uh, thread pierced now, which makes it slightly weaker because we went up through the middle, down at the top, up through the bottom, and then only pierced the thread once when we went back down in the middle. So it makes it, you know, a slightly, slightly weaker uh, pin stitch but um, I personally am mostly using just the single pierce pin stitch because I don't like the tail being up here and now I am going to share with you a tip that I've already shared on this channel which is a very very secret tip of mine and um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a naughty tip let's call it 
because it involves a knot. Now, before you say anything, before you get outraged, I know knots are not good for needlework. Um, the reason for knots being, you know, widely sort of um, considered a no-go is that, first of all, you'd have to make a really, really big knot in order to make sure that your, uh, uh, your knot stays on the other side of the fabric. If you're dealing with something like Ada here, that knot, so that it doesn't slip through, uh, this hole would have to be really big. And here comes the pickle. If you make really big knots on the other side of your fabric, this then makes for visible bumps on, uh, you know, once you have it framed. And it also creates a really big bulk around this area. So once you go back and you need to make more stitches, you need to pierce the hole a couple more times to make, you know, to fill the stitches in that area, that ginormous <laughs> uh, knot on the back of your fabric is going to really make things hard, really stand in the way, and it is going to create a bulk on the back of your fabric that is, it's just, you know, it's it's just not going to make things really easy and um you know i don't care about how it looks from the back but there are practical sides to having your back tidy and that is that once you spread it across uh, you know board to have it framed or something there are not going to be these bulges of you know bumpy sort of road of um your big knots on the back so we are definitely staying away from big knots. I want to make this absolutely clear. What I'm going to show you is my very secret tip on making sure that our pin stitch never unravels. And that is taking your thread and needle. This is, we are going to what is made, what is called a quilter's knot. I am going to make just one loop just one not two not three not four the more loops you make obviously the bigger uh, your knot becomes just one is enough i am going to make the knot i am going to clip it really 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 close to the knot and then I am going to go through the middle. So I'm not leaving my tail anywhere on the top. I'm straight away piercing my fabric from bottom up. I am going softly and gently. Uh, my knot is very tiny, so, you know, I, it wouldn't stand a chance against any sort of force, uh, for sure and it is really sort of tiny in the back. So gently go down, go up. And I'm going to go through sort of, you know, run along the first half of my stitch and make sure that I pierce in between the knot and the fabric and that I pierce some of the thread to go along with it and that's it I can I think I would sooner rip the fabric than you know lose this uh, un unravel this pin stitch and that's it like literally that's my very, very secret tip. Please don't be cross with me. Please don't be mad at me. Um, uh, you know, I firmly believe that there is no right or wrong way to cross stitch. There are just tips and tricks. Some things work better. Some things work less <laughs> for different people. So if this is not something that you would like to try, absolutely, you don't have to. There are these two proper ways of making a pin stitch um, that I would welcome you to give it a go um, and learn. Okay, 
So now we've covered the ways of making a pin stitch when you're straight away making a bottom leg uh, with your pin stitch and then all you have to do is just cross it with a top leg and uh, your cross is finished, your stitch is finished. You see, it's a power of habit. I don't want uh, <laughs> to have a knot in there now. Um, now, what some people do is that they would uh, make a pin stitch and then they would do a full cross over it. So what I can do is go through the middle, leave the tail, but then instead of just starting my bottom leg as usual, I can go up to make a vertical or horizontal um, stitch in the fabric. It's Ada and I am making sure I'm staying in the weave. So if we were here, I would make a horizontal, but because we're here, I'm making a vertical pin stitch because it gets buried a little bit. This obviously doesn't apply uh, to linen or even weave, but it does apply to Ada. I'm gonna snip it. And so I've made, you know, I finished my pin stitch and now I'm going to go and cross it with a full uh, cross stitch. And there we are. I think it's practically invisible. Um, it's visible because you know about it, but if you didn't know about it, I don't think you'd have a chance to really see that. When I just go up the fabric and clip it, this is because this is a practice Ada and I don't care that it is going to unravel. This is not a way that I would ever finish my uh, thread and think it's secure, just for the record. So I'm just going to show you the um, other way of, you know, to mirror uh, this way of making a pin stitch. So we're going to go um, with the tail, leave the tail in a corner, but we're going to make that horizontal line. So go up in the middle, down on the side, up in the middle, down on the side. And clip this off. And just, oh, what do I do? I wanted to do top leg straight away. And just do a full cross stitch over it. And, you know, this is pretty much it in terms of pin stitch variation for starting a thread. Now, when it comes to finishing, you can, um, do the horizontal or vertical finishing a little bit away from your stitches, your your last stitch of that color, if you're going to cover this bit with a different uh, stitching, if it's not an empty space, if you know what I mean. So if this is going to be covered with future stitches, I would be happy to just leave uh, this uh, pin stitch over here and you know uh, this will be covered nobody will know about that unless you have to start a thread in here so this requires a little bit of planning if you're finishing your stitches by making a an away pin stitch away meaning away from your last stitch of that color make sure that you end it in a square where you don't need to start another color with a pin stitch because to have two pin stitches in one square i mean it's possible it absolutely is possible this is how uh, uh, this is how confetti stitch is actually sort of one way of manage a confetti stitch, a single stitch. 
but if I can avoid it, I will, because it creates an unnecessary bulk in one square of fabric, that's all. Speaking of a confetti stitch, um, I'm going to quickly show you how I would approach it. This is a lot easier on Ada than on an even weave or linen fabric, but we're gonna try it in a little bit. So talking about Ada, I would do the bottom leg as usual, the first leg of your stitch. Going down, I always make sure that I pierce the thread. I know I am going to start getting annoying and boring when I say that, but it really is important. Then I'm going to clip it as close as possible, but without obviously damaging the fabric or the thread. Then I'm going to finish the top leg. And then I am going to go in the bottom middle, in between the, the entry points of the sort of legs at the bottom. I will go to the middle. So it's not the middle where we where we have our pin stitch meeting. It's this sort of middle. Let me show you on another square. It's not this middle. It is this middle. I hope that makes sense. There is a there is another sort of weave in between this middle and this middle. So it's a there's there's an additional anchor in between these and what you're going to do is that you're going to pierce the fabric in the same uh, place where your bottom um, pin stitch is anchored um, so you're going basically sort of underneath your top leg making sure that you don't Pierce it through the top leg. Well, I'm not a fan of confetti stitch, as you can see. Um, it's always a little bit visible. So that's why I don't really like it. Let me just show you how would it look without the top leg. So, this is my bottom leg. Done with a pin stitch. Let's pretend that I have crossed the top leg already. Then I've gone up through the bottom. I went back in the middle. I've gone up through the top middle and I've gone back down in the middle. So you have got two pin stitches, one starting the thread and one finishing the thread meeting right in the middle. The idea, which didn't work out here too well, is that um, if you if you follow the weave, um, so this is a uh, this is a um, vertical weave on Ada. Your finishing pin stitch is going to b be buried a little bit in the fabric. So if I sort of cross it, let's pretend that the top leg was there the whole time. This is significantly less visible, um, uh, the, the ending, you know, the second pin stitch is significantly less visible because it got buried into the Ada fabric. I hope this all makes sense. Please let me know if you have any sort of questions or you need to see a better demonstration. But just to wrap up, we have covered how to uh, make a, a pin stitch as a bottom leg of your stitch and then also how to make it as a, a sort of stitch on its own that goes uh, vertical or horizontal and then you stitch a full cross stitch over it and then we've covered how to finish it sort of away from your last stitch and then we've also talked about how to finish it in the same square as you started it which is very very handy for standalone uh, confetti or ninja stitches or however you'd like to call them. I am now going to show you how 
my back of the project looks like with the naughty uh, knot method that I have shared with you. Um, I'm going to show you two projects. So this is our project from the beginning. I don't know if you've noticed in the beginning, but there are tiny little knots, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Those are my knots that um, I use to start the thread with a naughty pin stitch. And I finish my thread when I can. I will finish it by running uh, the thread behind my existing stitches. It's just my go-to method. It's neither right nor wrong. Uh, um, you know, you do you. If this is something that you don't really agree with, that's absolutely perfectly fine use other methods like what we've just discussed finishing uh, the thread with a pin stitch as well but i personally prefer to run my thread behind the existing stitches just a couple four or five sometimes three sometimes two however many i have available so that's one project and there is a second project um, that is the current one I'm working on. It's single color only, so it is very well visible. So you can see uh, the little knots over here. I could definitely make it tidier, but I think it's tidy enough. Um, good enough is <laughs> good enough for me. As promised, I am also going to show you the pin stitch and the different variations on a linen. This is a 40 count uh, linen. It's a vintage country mocha. It's what my previous project was stitched on. It's one of my favorite uh, fabrics actually. Um, and um, let me just show you how would I approach this. By the way, we have got videos on how to stitch on linen and also how to stitch with one strand of floss, dedicated videos to just these topics. So I am linking them um, in the uh, right uh, upper right corner. And if you are interesting to, you know, if you are interested in learning any more about these, please, please do check out these videos that we have already published. But let me just show you how to quickly make a pin stitch on this. So as we've discussed, unlike Ada that has got the very clear middle on linen or even weave, you would just start uh, in an available hole in the fabric. And then we will go up, which is going to, we are creating the bottom leg of your stitch now. We are going to go down while making sure we're piercing our one strand of floss. And then I'm going to go here to finish our bottom leg of the stitch and making sure that I pierce the thread as well. I'm going to go up. Clip it off. Finish the stitch and that's pretty much it. Um, if I wanted to finish my thread on linen with a pin stitch as well, I would go in the middle hole in between any of the two available sort of entry points for the legs of my cross stitch and I would go underneath these stitches to go down in the middle hole I would go up again through the middle in between these two stitches and go down again and then I would probably just go up here again and clip it off. This is really handy in case you need to not turn your fabrics so maybe 
you have a big scroll roll with a major huge project and turning would be you know impractical it would take too long time to turn it and weave uh, your thread on the back of the fabric so this is a really handy uh, thing to know about and um, I am just going to show you my quick little trick so I am going to make just one uh, turn for my quiltus knot this is a really really tiny knot like very tiny I'm going to show you just how tiny because maybe I made it too small because it might go through fabric without even no you see it creates some sort of resistance but with the gentlest of of tugs you're going to take it out so sometimes when the hole happens to be a little bit larger and uh, my small knot goes through too easily i go at a bit of an angle because as long as you have an angle the thread is anchoring already we have discussed this so i'm helping uh, the um, knot to stay on the back of the fabric by you know not going up like that which would go which would just pop out straight away but i'm going at an angle which makes sure that the thread doesn't the, the knot doesn't go through and i'm going to go bottom top okay I have pierced it, that's my bottom leg, this is my top leg and let me quickly show you how does it look on the back. This, th there's my tiny little knot on the back, it's almost invisible and this is the previous, um, the previous pin stitch that I did. The one thing to be aware of when stitching on linen and even weave, linen specifically, because even weave has got a little bit of um, sort of additives to it. It's not pure linen, so the fabric is a little bit rougher and will have a better grip on your thread. But with linen, especially natural sort of buttery linen will make it very easy for uh, your thread to glide through and it is usually on linen where people find that pin stitches unravel a little bit more easily than on ada or even weave so just make sure that when you are creating your pin stitch on linen that you are piercing uh, the thread as we've discussed and if you really can't get on with it, uh, try my little uh, secret trick right here and see if that is something uh, that will make your stitching more enjoyable, which is everything that this is about. Make your stitching more enjoyable and avoid any pitfalls that might make it mm, not pretty after you have finished it. Uh, after you know you want to display it uh, and obviously you've dedicated so much time into making that piece so you know make sure that you enjoy that time and at the end of it uh, it is nice and pretty and can be hung on the wall or displayed any which way you like and this is it from me today this is everything about pin stitches that I know. I hope that this has been in some way helpful to you. If you'd like to see more videos from us, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell or browse through the videos that we have already published, um, like the parking method or stitching with one strand or stitching on even weave or other interesting videos like how to store your threads or fabric any questions you have down in the comments below and i thank you so much for spending your stitchy and learning time with me today i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you soon